What's going on everyone, Tom Gorin here and welcome back to Season 2, finally, of the F122 Carlin Career Mode series. We are now officially in Season 2 and as this video goes up, we're officially in 2023. So first of all, Happy New Year, hopefully your Christmas was alright, and second of all, yeah, we're in Season 2 now, which is in, the, in this universe, 2023. And in real life, when this video is uploaded, it'll be in 2023. And as the thumbnail uh, clearly states, season two or 2023, you know, the two and then the zero and then the, yeah, you get the point. Season two, season 2023 in 2023. Okay, let's move on. Right, first race of the season of this second season of the Carl and Career Mode series. So, 16 races around um, in this car. Obviously, I've changed some of the uh, delivery. And, of course, um, we have had some updates to um, just the game overall. The driver ratings, the cars, the handling model, this car in general as well. And pretty much, uh, yeah. So, before we get started, make sure to like the video, share, comment, and subscribe for the remainder of this F122 career mode series as we go 8th place in the first qualifying session of this season. So as of this video right now we are the 4th or 3rd worst car and as you'll see around about now we're through into Q2 this is 103 difficulty so for this first race and probably ne the next race in Australia, we're probably going to be messing around with the difficulty, just trying to see what difficulty is best. David Beckman being really bad because he didn't make it out into Q uh, Q1, and here we are about to go into Q2 with literally one minute remaining. So, yeah, practice... Practice went really bad. I haven't touched this game in literally a couple of weeks since the RFL um, Baku race. And yeah, I've literally not touched this game since before Christmas. So this is the first time that I've literally been on this game again and just driving. And I can't lie, the car doesn't seem that bad. Um, obviously, the rear end is a little bit, little bit loose, but I think it's just because we don't have um, enough rear downforce upgrades um, but in other news um, we do have a custom setup and second of all we have the best engine obviously we have the Mercedes engine we didn't switch engines from last video we still have the Mercedes engine and now because of the supply upgrades because of our upgrades we now have the best engine out of all the cars which is very useful and you'll see why in this video why the engine upgrades plus the custom setup is very helpful on this track, especially for this career mode. But ending this lap, this is pretty much the last lap in Q2. And if we nail this lap together, we go a little bit wide in the final corner. We could go into Q3. For some reason, this track brings out the best in our car. Across the line we go. And ladies and gentlemen, in our first race back... In the new season, we're through into Q3. What? what? What's going on right now? I don't know what the hell's going on. We have the fourth worst car, and somehow, we're literally through into Q3. Look at the gap between Lando Norris and Daniel Ricciardo. That's literally P8 to P11. That's literally less, what, just over a tenth? And we're through into Q3. And this lap, this lap doesn't count because I went wide on the exit of 8, 8 or 9, and that literally invalidated the lap. It was a 28-1. Our lap that we did was a 28-1, and that would have pretty much put us in 10th place. But the objective is complete. We're, we were through, we're through into Q3 for the first time this season, and... Um, we were also in Q3 last season in Jeddah as well. And as you can see, here's our lap time. Pretty much, uh, yeah, 121. And as you'll see, the ninth place, yeah, 28, uh, 27, uh, 8, which was good enough for P10. No 
No more testing, no more practice. This is the real deal. And it's make or break here at round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. So let's take a look at the topographical map of the Jeddah Street circuit. As you can see, a number of challenging corners for the drivers to master here. We'll see just how much the teams have benefited from their time spent in practice this weekend. And like many street circuits, this track has the potential to punish drivers that get it wrong. Let's hope we avoid any safety cars today. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. It's Carlos Sainz in pole position. Max Verstappen lines up alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Russell, Leclerc, Sergio Perez, and Hamilton, Norris, Oscar Piastri, Ocon, and Thomas, Ricardo, Magnussen, Mick Schumacher, and Gasly, Joe, Albon, Valtteri Bottas, and Yuki Tsunoda, Stroll, Latifi, David Beckman and Robert Schwartzman. A new season then, a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today as we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. And they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. So I will say this right here, right now, that right before this race, I wasn't really feeling that comfortable. Considering that I'd only did five laps of qualifying and 10 maximum laps in practice, I'm not feeling it. I'm not oozy, as they call, as they say on the streets. I'm not oozy when it comes to this game. But you know what? We qualified in the top 10 once again. And for some reason, this track is actually decent we seem to really gel on this track with our car we did it last year in season one and now in season two we have done the exact same thing so it's only right that we we reach for the stars if you will and we look to score points how many points i don't know hopefully we can get eighth place or better but time will tell Here we go then, the formation lap gets underway and the excitement here is building as we near ever closer to the start of the race. Which team will come out on top? Who's got their strategies right for today's race? Soon. They're almost ready to take the start of the race as the cars take their positions on the grid. With the drivers and teams making their final preparations. Here we go, brand new car, brand new season. The first race of season two is underway now, and it's a decent start for us and also as well Oscar Piastri, we lose the back end there. Daniel Ricciardo is up into P10. Kevin Magnussen goes down or outside. We clip um, Esteban Ocon right there, but as you can see, uh, we don't have any damage and we're down right now. That's not good. We're down to P11 right now in the first race of season two of this career mode and um, the car actually doesn't feel that bad i mean yes we do have the best engine and you'll see in this video why we have the best engine and how useful um having the best engine is and throughout these first uh three to five laps you'll see that daniel ricardo in that mclaren like going through the high speed corners he's just all over us and entering seventh and then eighth gear like, but for some reason, we just gain when we go in towards 195, 200 mile an hour. And if we can work on the chassis, if we can work more on the rear uh, stability of the car, uh, you know, the rear of the car when it comes to downforce, and also just take off some 
some uh, weight, with some chassis upgrades, we could be in a very good position as far as developing this car and fighting for podiums and eventually the win when that comes. But the objective today is very simple. As long as we score points, that's all we can ask for. We've qualified in 10th place, even with our quality time, if that would have stood, um, we would have still got 10th place. But the first seven laps or so, we're just trying to find the groove of this car. We're trying to find how quick this car is in a straight line. Around the outside, we go with Kevin Magnussen. Magnussen actually hits Ocon, and that's Magnussen's race ruined. He's got damage to his front wing, and I wouldn't say... I would also say that that's not the only damage that Kevin Magnussen has. He also has emotional damage um, because he's just literally punted Esteban Ocon and that's his race truly over and Magnussen is in the mud with emotional damage. So, entering <laughs> lap 10, look at this, the two Al Alpines, the two Alpines going side by side in towards the uh, turn to chicane and not the first time that the two Alpines have went side by side. I have to tell you, Esteban Ocon, you are a shite teammate. What are you doing, man? You're holding up Pierre, uh, Pierre, Pierre Gasly? Okay, then Oscar Piastri. You're holding up his... Look at him. He's trying to go, uh, go around the outside in towards the final corner and all Ocon's doing is literally ruining his race and he's ruining his teammate and as you can see the straight line speed is absolutely OP we're maxing out 211 mile an hour and Piastri, Piastri son what are you doing lad why are you trying to hold your front wing in towards turn one they concede the position my guy but we got to position and now we're coming in on lap number uh, 12 as we make our one and only pit stop from the mediums to the hards. It's the typical F122 strategy, the one stop mediums to hards unless there's an early or late safety car. So coming in, let's go for a 2.5 second pit stop. Oh, nice one. 2.4 seconds. You'll love to see it. I actually forgot how quick my pick crew are um, in this game. And, and as you see that nice cheeky pit lane exit and um, there's no uh, no penalty for that so we will go on David Beckman I have to tell you man David Beckman needs some work and I'm already regretting uh, re-signing uh, David Beckman for this second season he has not done this car any any favors at all and while we are literally carrying this team on our backs Beckman is literally just trodling along so Hopefully, during the progression of the second season, hopefully Beckman gets his finger out. Otherwise, when it comes to mid-season negotiations, I might need to um, make him acknowledge me and I need to show him the door and literally kick him out. But that's for the future. Lap 17 of 25. Um, there's a yellow flag, green flag. Mick Schumacher has retired from the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix and as you'll see around about now, it is an engine failure. He goes a little bit wide on the exit too, and as you can see because of the white smoke, Mick Schumacher has got an engine issue. Not what Haas want to see from um, from the son of the seven-time world champion. How is he even here? Literally, next season in real life, he won't even he won't even have a seat in Formula One. And unfortunately for Mick, in this alternate universe, it's not going his way as we ty uh, type as we hit the wall on the uh, right side so we're coming in and we've actually we've actually done the undercut we've actually gained on ricardo and archon um, and at this point in time hamilton has an issue and um, literally mark the radio engineer literally told me hamilton has an, has an issue i don't know what it is i don't know if it's an ers failure i don't know if it's just engine wear i don't know if he doesn't have drs or whatever but Hamilton does have an issue, and we're going to show Hamilton who has the best Mercedes engine. Yeah, mate, you might be driving the actual Mercedes, but guess what? This is the real Mercedes engine. Look at the speed that we have. We've just absolutely flown by Lewis Hamilton. And if you can insert that Keemstar meme, I'm fast as fuck, boy. Yeah, Lewis Hamilton, I'm fast as fuck with my actual Mercedes engine. Oh, what's that, Landon Norris? You have a quick engine. Well, guess what? 
we've just absolutely mugged you off and ah oh, me. <laughs> Oh, uh, what is going on in this video? Landon Norris is just locked up, he's just saw our car, and he's just like, oh my god, that speed is too much, and I've just bro <laughs> I've just broke too late and locked up, and okay, he's actually all over us, so I can't lie, and he's actually diving down the inside, what are you doing, you absolute dickweeb, but... Look at his straight line speed. Even with no DRS, Landon Norris has DRS, we don't. Even with ERS, our straight line speed is absolutely ridiculous. Lando tries to fight down the inside in towards 10-1, but I'm not having any of it. And we retain 6th place in this Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Lap 24, we lose the back end there a little bit. A scary moment there, we need a span there. But as you can see... Our straight line speed is absolutely sensational in this new car. As Esteban Ocon says, fast lap of the race, Ocon tries to go down the inside, but we're not going to have anything of it as we hold the line in towards two and we retain sixth place. But clearly, the foundation of this car is there. The straight line speed is there. As Ocon goes down the inside once again, he leaves the gap there. He leaves his nose in where he doesn't belong. But it's going to be a photo finish between me and Esteban Ocon to the line. And it's going to be us who hold off. We score our first points in the first race of the season. Lovely job. And that brings the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix to a close then. As we reflect on the team's impressive performance today. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? Well, they certainly stood out as a drive with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. Now I can't lie, uh, during this commentary, I haven't, f I haven't been feeling oozy in this, uh, in this video. It, the commentary has been a mess. I do apologise. It's the first video back in a couple weeks. The first career mode video in a couple weeks, and I need to get back to uh, getting used to the sight. Max Verstappen winning in the Red Bull, he was the best driver in real life and in this alternate universe, Max Verstappen takes the lead and if you noticed, Verstappen has the 33, he doesn't have the number one and the reason why he doesn't have the number one is because of Charles Leclerc, Charles Leclerc is the world champion if you needed any um, history lesson on this series, but that is that for this very first race of season two of the f1 22 career mode series with carlin we've scored sixth place it's only up for him from here but the most important thing is the foundation is there thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next video goodbye